Hey, Tim Bistacio here at my house, and today we're going to talk about room pressurization. This is an often overlooked diagnostic that a technician can very easily make in order to find the cause of a lot of comfort problems in rooms like bedrooms, home offices, and master suites. Now, behind me is my home office, and it's really the third bedroom of my house. So I've got a supply duct that delivers conditioned air just like you would find in any house. I've also got a dedicated return, but let's face it, most houses don't have a, either a dedicated return, a jumper duct, a transfer grill, or even enough door undercut to be able to provide a nice, clear, low pressure return path back to the main return of the house or to the air handler. And so a lot of times when these doors get closed because they're bedrooms or they're home offices, then pressure could build up in that room. Now, if the room is airtight, then yes, pressure can build up actually to the point where it could impact how much air can come out of the duct itself, which can cause comfort problems. If you're not delivering all the CFMs that you need to, to heat and cool that room, it's going to not be comfortable. But when a room is leaky, well, that air is going to come out. It's going to try to build pressure behind that door, but it's just going to leak out. And that's not desirable either because we've lost that conditioned air. But the most undesirable part of that scenario is that we're depressurizing the rest of the house. If we pressurize this room, then that means that we're depressurizing something else. That air has got to come from somewhere. And when we depressurize a room or the main part of the house, we can pull in pollutants, heat and humidity and cause all kinds of comfort and indoor air quality problems. And those are the service calls that you as a technician or a contractor run all the time. So I'm gonna show how we can quickly diagnose and offer some really sensible solutions in these cases. And I've got with me the DG8 from the Energy Conservatory and I've also got a nice little tool that is the size of a business card or a credit card. It fits in your pocket, in your wallet, in your truck, and it's called the Roomulator. I'm going to show you how to use this so that we can offer some good, sensible solutions to fix problems like this. So the first thing we're going to do is turn our system on to its highest stage. So I've gone to my Ecobee thermostat and I've set the stage two test to on. And just so I don't overheat or overcool my house, I've just pulled the disconnect on my outdoor unit. So my unit thinks it's running in second stage. The fan is running in second stage, but I'm not actually heating and cooling the house for this test. The next thing we're going to do is turn on our DG8 and we're going to set it to Pascals. Now Pascals is a really low pressure measurement. It's a lot better than inches of water column when we are diagnosing room to room pressures like this. And we're going to hook up our hose to the positive port of the manometer and we're going to open the door and toss the hose inside. Now what we're looking for is for our gauge to read zero. Obviously there is no pressure difference across this threshold because the door is open. But now let's close the door and see what happens. So when the door closes, we can see that we build around 3.8, 3.9 pascals of pressure. So something else to keep in mind, three pascals, four pascals, not really a lot of pressure. And I don't want you going and running to your customer telling them, oh, I found the silver bullet. It's this three and a half pascal difference you have across this door when it closes. Because in reality, that's probably not going to be the cause of your comfort problem. The reason why I'm demonstrating it at this pressure is because I have a high performance house and I was not able to generate any more pressure than that. But your typical house that's having comfort problems because of a high room pressure difference, you're going to be seeing pressure a lot higher than that. So for the purists out there, because you can't make an educational video these days without somebody trying to pick it apart, I am not saying that you need to go run and start putting in transfer grills and jumper ducts at three and a half pascals. This is just a demonstration about how the remulator works. Okay, moving on. All right, let's next talk about the Roomulator. Again, this is a tool developed with a partnership of the National Comfort Institute and TEC. As we can see, we've got like a little ruler thing on the front side, but then on the back side, we've got some instructions here. So like always, we want to RTFM. So I'm gonna take you right through the steps. There is a great YouTube video, it's about a minute long, that's narrated and conducted by Chris Hughes. If you just scan that QR code, it'll take you right to the YouTube video. That's gonna be the best way for you to know how to use the Remulator once you've watched this video. This video goes into a little bit more detail as to why we need to use it. But once you've got that figured out, just take a picture of that QR code. It'll send you to the YouTube video every time if you need a refresher on how to use the tool. 
Okay, the next thing we're going to do is crack this door open. And we're going to open this door just enough so that the Pascals go down below three. So that's a pretty good reading right there. And we're just going to measure how far we had to open this door in order to achieve that. Okay, the next thing that we're going to do is measure just how far we have to open this door in order to get that pressure down below three pascals. And what I'm seeing here is around a half an inch. So it's that mark right there. So we're going to take that measurement and we're going to proceed to the next step. All right, so we measured a half inch opening in order to get this room pressure under control. And that's what you see there on the left column. We've got uh, several rows that go from half inch all the way down to three inch. Well, we're going to use the half inch row. Going from left to right, that means that we will need to move 75 CFMs through this opening, and that equates to a 9-inch jumper duct if we're using that strategy. If we're using a transfer grill, then we're going to have to get a transfer grill with an open area, not the physical area, because remember the louvers take up usually around 20 to 30 percent of the opening, but an open area of 60 inches. And if we wanted to use a door undercut, if this is a 30 inch door, we would have to cut 1.2 inches off the bottom of the door. Now, I do not prefer door undercuts and transfer grills because they create privacy issues. Rather, if we're going to use a jumper duct in here, it's going to have to be a nine inch jumper duct. And that's not a really big room inside and it's only fed by a six inch supply. So you can see where you may be tempted, well, if it's a six inch in, I just need to put a six inch jumper duct out, but it doesn't work that way. We want a, a more free area, a larger duct path for that air to come out of that room. So just because you've dumped a six inch duct into that room doesn't mean that that's gonna be your jumper duct. Now, remember if behind this door, I've got a dedicated return. So a dedicated return is a little bit different than a jumper duct. A return has got some pull on it, where a jumper duct is what we call a passive duct. So just to be clear, this whole test that we're running is so that we can properly size a passive return path. Because a lot of times a dedicated return is simply not possible, but it's a lot easier to create a jumper duct put a transfer grill in, maybe even some door undercut if we absolutely must in order to achieve that result. So in the field, those are more realistic solutions than a dedicated return. A dedicated return is going to have more pull on it, so it's going to be in a better position to move that airflow with the slightly smaller duct. But a passive return path needs to be a lot bigger because we don't have that mechanical pull on it. All right, so there you have it. If you ran a service call on this room, because it was experiencing comfort problems. You may not have a flow hood with you. You may not have an anemometer with you to be able to take the airflow reading that is coming out of that room, but you do have a nice precision manometer like the DG8 from the Energy Conservatory. And so with this very simple test, we can figure out what size jumper duct, transfer grill, or door undercut that we need to use in order to solve this pressure problem. So once you've solved the pressure problem, you still want to take it a little step further, and that is to understand how much heat and cooling and airflow need to go in the room. Because if you're still not delivering enough heating and cooling, or maybe you're delivering too much, you're still going to have comfort problems. But at least with this method, we've solved a very fixable problem, which is that room pressurization. If you need to adjust the airflow, again, you can talk to the customer about adding dampers, doing some air balancing, maybe upsizing the supply duct. That is a different test, but this test using the DG8 and the Roomulator is very easy to diagnose how bad your room pressurization problem is and how big of a jumper duct transfer grill or door undercut that you're going to need to propose in order to fix that problem. Until next time, thanks for watching, and as always, be safe.